Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today's video we're going to discuss the backswing, specifically how you can make a shoulder turn that is centered without too much sway to the left, to the right, too much standing up or too much dipping down. So as we move on to the mat and discuss the idea of a centered turn, we have to agree at this point that a centered turn is desirable. Um, I think it is. I think you look at most golfers, the elite golfers in the world, uh, not moving around a, a great deal in the backswing, they're staying more or less centered. Um, and that's become really the, the kind of cool term that everybody's using to describe how the backswing works these days. So, so I try and keep my sternum, you know, not too far from the ball. I don't like it too far back. I don't want it ahead of the ball, definitely. Just kind of, you know, right about even with it. <clears throat> when I shift my weight, I want this sternum to stay right there. I don't want it to move side to side at all. I don't want this head to move either. I take my right hip and say if I had a shaft in the ground straight up, I want my right hip to turn but move away from the shaft. Okay, so I don't want a bump like this. That's kind of, that's a sway. I want a complete rotation just like that. That's how Hogan used to use his lower body. So that's all I would tell you with your, your weight transfer is just <clears throat> try and stay centered over the ball. I like just centered over the ball. If you just want to stay centered, rotate and rotate through. And that's pretty simple. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than that. So being centered, seems to be more preferable to shifting too much to the right or shifting too much to the left. So we're going to start from that premise that we actually want to make a centered turn from the face on view and to some extent a, a, a turn that's, it, which, whose inclination to the ground stays stable from a down the line view. So when it comes to making a centered turn we aren't just talking about rotation on its own. It's not simply turning our body. There's a three-dimensional motion here of, of rotation or turning. There's some tilting that's going on. And there's also some extension. So forward and backward bend that's happening throughout the time and the space of the backswing. Uh, but, but putting all those pieces together, if we were to be doing this correctly, we would have a fairly stable or steady head uh, from the face on view. And we would have a fairly stable inclination to the ground from a down the line view. So let me show you what that would look like, first of all. So as I swing back and begin to make my backswing, the motion is coming from the knees chain beginning to change flex, the hips therefore beginning to turn, and the shoulders turning around my spine on this inclined plane by virtue of the fact that I'm tilting to the left as I'm turning to the right. So I'm blending those motions. It's not simply a turning and it's not simply just pure tilting. Uh, what I'm really aiming to do in this video is to help you to identify what piece is missing or which piece you have too much of if you recognize that when you film your swing, your head is moving up and down or from the face on view from side to side. So the desirable outcome, once again, from face on view is to make a backswing where the head stays centered shoulders turn around 90 degrees and in order for that to happen the hips have to turn about half of that maybe even slightly more and in order for the hips to turn and stay fairly centered your knees have to change flex as well so one of the things I do at the outset of your swing is to make sure you have your feet turned out that helps to have your knees slightly more turned out and that can really aid with the hip rotation. If you end up getting your toes too straight or pinched in, it can really hamper 
the knee flex change, which in, uh, hampers the, the hip rotation and can lead to issues in terms of being able to make a centered pivot. So let's have our feet turned out to start with. We know what we're desiring, desiring here. We know what we're looking for. We're looking for this centered pivot and we're looking for this inclination to remain constant from down the line. What would it look like if I had too much tilt? Too much tilt would look from this angle down the line, my head would actually go down towards the ground. It's where the left tilt is out racing the turning and the extension, so my head would go down. So if your head was moving down towards the ball on the backswing, you're tilting too quickly. Contrary to that, the opposite of that would be if you turned on the backswing and didn't tilt enough, you'd recognize your head raising up away from the ground, which would really be a function of your shoulders turning too level to the ground. So if your head's raising up, you need to add more tilt. If your head's dipping down, you need to reduce the amount of tilt till we find that happy medium where we're able to maintain this inclination to the ground. And from the face on view, if my head starts to move away from the target, so my head starts to move to the right here, that's really a function of not enough extension or shoulder bend backwards. So if my head starts to move to the right, which is probably the most common issue that I see with regular golfers week in, week out, who struggle with low point control, their head, the, the turning piece and the flexion of their spine outraces the extension piece. So as they turn too much, their head gets pulled to the right. That starts to have certain ramifications in terms of low point control and also swing direction. So if you notice your head moving to the right on your backswing, you want to feel like your head or your spine extends towards the target. That may well feel like your head's going towards the target. In reality, it's probably helping you to stay more centered, but it may feel like you need to go more to the left in order to maintain that centered turn. And then of course, some golfers overextend too much on the backswing they start to have their head moving towards the target, they have too much weight moving forwards in the backswing. And if that's you, it's rare, it's rare to see that one. The, the, the other alternative that I just showed you is more, more common. But if you're someone who notices their head going towards the target on the backswing, you're overextending too quickly. You actually need to feel like you keep your chest down a little bit more as you turn. So once again, in order to maintain a centered turn, we often need to feel some very extreme sides or ends of the spectrum in order to create the reality that we're looking for. So if I say that again, what I'm really getting at here is the idea of keeping a steady or stable head or stable inclination is the, is the goal. But in order to achieve that, you very often have to feel some quite extreme moves. I know a lot of golfers are trying to keep their head still and it's moving all over the place. And what they really need to feel is a head moving in a particular direction in order to maintain the stability that they're looking for. So one more time, just to recap, it's for you to recognize which bit you're doing too much of or too little of, whether that's from face on or whether that's from over tilting from down the line or not tilting enough. And once you recognize which piece you're missing or have too much of, it's up to you to put more of the opposite feeling in place. And so then you film your swing again, you check using the camera, and if your head is staying stable, then you're, you're using an appropriate amount of feel, whether that feels like an exaggeration or not, that is the appropriate amount of feel in order to achieve the, the reality that you're after. Once you recognize the appropriate feel that you're after, you should be adding that into your practice swings, adding that into your drills, and then going ahead, hitting balls and checking to make sure that the reality is matching your intention. If it is, great, carry on doing that amount. If it's not, monitor how much again or how little you're doing of a certain piece. It may be you need to keep exaggerating and feeling more of a particular part of the swing than another. It's, quite, it's also quite likely or quite possible that you can begin to overdo a piece after a little after a little bit of time practicing. So the key here is to keep monitoring your swing via the video, checking it from face on, checking it from down the line, circling in your head and making sure that you're staying centered from a face on view. 
and that you're keeping your inclination to the ground from a down the line view. The ultimate goal of course is to build a swing that repeats, helps you to control the contact, helps you control the distance and the direction. The real benefit to a centered turn is the fact that we're going to be able to control the low point of the swing more effectively and a stable or centered turn also helps us to control the swing direction which is a huge part of controlling the directional control of the ball. So there you have it, some ideas around how you would make a more stable, more centered shoulder turn in the backswing. Um, it's a very specific way to do it, it's not random, it's not something that you just miraculously do. Some people are more predisposed to doing it naturally than others for sure, but if you're finding it difficult to do, hopefully some of those explanations in terms of tilts and extension can really help you to find that middle ground that you're looking for. A centered shoulder turn with a stable inclination is certainly my preference in terms of how I would teach the golf swing. Having said that, there may be others who disagree with that, that's fine. I'm not particularly worried or interested in having that conversation today. This video deals with that specific turn, that stable turn, which is centered from the face on view and retains that inclination to the ground from the down the line view. If you wanted to do it differently, you certainly could. That's entirely up to you. You could also use some of the information I shared in this video to help you to do that. Should you want the head to move to the left or the right, I've explained how you would add more of that piece. So use the references in this video, not just to make this one swing if you, if you wanted to do it that way. You can also use some of the information to help you overdo or underdo other pieces as well. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this video, please post them in the comments section down below. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about centered pivots, weight shift, or anything else that accompanies your thoughts on this video. Until next time, guys, stay safe, get some practice in if you can, and I'll see you very soon for another video.